What's up guys, welcome to another video and today we'll be doing some TOA hard and I'm just going to show you uh, the boss floors for 70, 80 and 90. So these ones will be the hardest ones and like these are ones you want to, or well, at least you want to complete 70 and 80 for the Devilmon and the Crystals in my opinion. Uh, beyond that, it's really up to you whether you want to do, like try to go for 90 for the LD scroll. I think it's most important to get the uh, the, the crystals at least, um, or at the very minimum, Devil Mon. So that's why I'm doing you know, the, this series of uh, videos. So first off, we've got Kraka, and this is the, the first trash wave, right? So you have to be, be careful here because the Death Knights, the Fedoras, they do an immunity buff and also the Endure uh, buff for one turn. Um, so if you can't tank through you know, all the damage that's going to be coming in, uh, try to bring some buff removal for like to um, so that you can continue crowd controlling them. Obviously, for most TOA hard floors, you want to bring as much crowd control as you can to reduce the amount of damage you're taking each turn. Because obviously, if all five of them move at once, it's pretty likely that you might lose a unit or two. So yeah, try to like bring stuns, of course, because in TOA hard, obviously there's no violent procs unless they have it, you know, from the skill itself. For example, uh, like Akukos and um, things like uh, Brownie Magicians. Basically, yeah, those those units that have like additional turn of one of their skills. All right. So as for my the team I'm using, I tried to use like a team that is semi obtainable like i think everyone here is either obtainable or replaceable so basically like I, as in like let's say chasun she's enough for that's not farmable or anything like that but you can always replace her with any other healer you want especially if you're manualing it's like cuz what i'm doing i'm just autoing through um, the whole the stage just because i'm lazy i don't really want to manual the whole thing so uh, yeah, that's why I'm, I'm running running her. But you can use something like Bella. Bella is fine as well. Um, Bella also provides you the uh, buff removal if you need it. Uh, for Brian, who is my reviver, you don't also don't need him either. Um, he's more there as an insurance policy. Um, you can you can always do it TOA hard without him as long as you, if you're manualing throughout the whole boss stage you don't really need a reviver but if you if you can afford to bring one then you know by all means it makes it a bit safer just in case something goes wrong um, but yeah you can use any other unit you want like like some sort of crowd control unit or something with good debuffs would also help things like uh, attack break is the, like probably the, the most um, important one alternatively things with slow stuns or glancing debuff all pretty good for TOA hard because all, they all help to reduce the amount of damage you're taking uh, so yeah it would depend a bit on whether you're manually manually doing this or um, or just autoing uh, you can auto the trash waves I think for, for most people who are capable of getting to TOA 70 you should be able to auto trash waves uh, usually for me, I'll auto trash ways and then manual the boss if the boss is pretty hard. Some bosses I can auto, uh, but that will depend on which boss it is. Kraka is very difficult to completely auto the whole way through. Uh, reason being, you'll see soon that um, the, the infernos that are with her are very squishy, and like if you kill them, they will explode and do a lot of damage. Uh, but I'll get to that once we get to the boss. Now, as for controlling Kraka's damage and also her like her skills, right? So Kraka, the most um, uh, dangerous thing about her is her revive. Okay, because the revive will uh, resurrect a unit and put an invincibility buff on them, and also reset their skill cooldown, which is very important for the. Uh, the Infernos because it will, I believe it, I believe the passive can be reset, so, uh, or like it's used once, right, so once they come back, 
she'll reset the cooldown on it, I believe. Um, but you'll you'll see in the video later that um, a unit re will revive, so you actually see it in in action and like uh, like why you want to be careful uh, with Cracker. So there's a couple ways you can control uh, like her from like from or like prevent her from using the skills. First off, you can use skill resets. So any unit that can reset cooldowns uh, on, the, on an opponent is useful. For example, Delphoi, uh, even like a Lumerisha, um, there's also things like Mihail, if you happen to have her, um, Ganymede, those sort of units that can reset cooldowns. They're, they're good because it will stop Kraker for from doing the ability at least for one turn. Now, um, now the Infernos, as I said, they they're very squishy, right? You can see that like, I'm hitting them and they're taking a lot of damage, right? Like my skills don't uh, like it's not supposed to do much apart from the dots, right? As far as the direct damage is concerned, they're not supposed to do much damage to like your tier way hard units. But these Infernos have basically no HP. So just be very careful when you're hitting them. You want to apply dots onto the uh, Infernos or bombs is an, another option you can use. So things like Sierra, uh, Malaka, Dover, those sort of units. You can use bombs on, on the uh, Infernos too. Because bombs and dots, um, they don't... Like, they're, they're not uh, directly killing the unit. Right, so if you kill the Infernos with direct damage, which you'll actually you'll see later that uh, one of my units will directly kill one of the, one of the Infernos, the Inferno will explode and base it pretty much one shots any unit, right? Especially on like a like a floor this high. If it's on a lower floor, it probably won't one shot you. But from like seventy onwards, it's pretty dangerous. Um, so yeah, if you kill them with direct like with continuous damage. They won't explode, and you know, uh, against whoever applied the dots or bombs, right? So once they're out of the way, then you just have to control, like stop Cracker from reviving them. So as I said, you can use skill re cooldown resets. Alternatively, you can use attack bar reduction. So attack bar re reduction would be things like Hua, Farad, Spectra, those sort of things, right? You you want a lot of consistent attack bar reduction, right? So, for example, Spectra on his own probably won't do the job. But if you combine him with other units that do um, attack bar reset, like Beretta plus things like, like another attack bar resetter, that you probably do enough. Or things like Hua who have consistent attack bar reduction. You can stop the boss from moving altogether if you um, if your units are fast enough. As for how much speed you need, it's hard to say. Uh, it will depend a little bit on your violent procs as well. So if you run a violent Hua, uh, uh, then it's a lot easier because Hua will have a lot more turns uh, to keep the boss you know, under control. Especially if, she, if it, she gets resisted, then she has a chance to proc and have another chance at reducing attack bar. The other alternative is to use taunts. So if there's a few options. Uh, in my team, I'm using Mav to taunt the boss. I think Mav is probably the most reliable. He's got uh, his taunt of harmful effect rate is 100% when max skilled, um, and obviously he provides a lot of utility as well. He can stun the Infernos with his first skill, and he can also reduce the cooldowns on your units as well, as well as doing speed buff. So he's got a lot of utility in this fight. But most importantly, is the is the taunt. So you want to give your Mav pretty good accuracy. I would recommend about 80% or higher. Um, just to make sure that um, you know Mav's landing the toy as, like, as consistently as possible. You can see here uh, Kraka revived the Inferno and he's got an invincibility buff. You can still stun it because he doesn't give him uh, sorry he gives him invincibility not immunity right so you can still stun the, the Inferno. Uh, that gives you some time to reapply the dots without killing him. So in a way, it's good for uh, you know that, that he gets the invincibility. Otherwise, it's very easy for him to die straight away. Once you've reapplied the dots, make sure you stop hitting him and then you know focus on the boss again. 
Um, and that pretty much covers it. So, if, but if you don't have Mav, uh, there are uh, other alternative taunters. Things like, uh, like what well, the most or well, the unit that I recommend if you don't have Mav is Jubel. Jubel is the Dark Vagabond, and uh, he's good because his his skill two uh, has a, a harmful effect rate of 100%. All right. Because um, the other alternatives are things like Armin, um, Basalt, Talc, you know, those units that have turn 1, like first skill Provoke. But their Provokes are only 80% harmful effect rate. So that's why I prefer Jubel, because it's 100%. And when Jubel gets hit, he'll get, get the cooldown on the Taunt will uh, be reduced as well. So it's very easy to just to maintain Taunt with Jubel, um, especially if he's on Violent. Um, and that pretty much covers Kraka. So, uh, yeah, th those are the main ways you keep her under control. You have to stop her from uh, using the summon. Keep in mind also, if you're running the skill reset route, um, the boss the bosses on TOA hard cool down their skills really quickly. All right, so just be careful of that. You you might might reset once, but you have to reset pretty much once she gets a new turn. You have to make sure you reset her again. Otherwise, she'll be able to revive again. All right, now moving to Julianne. So Julianne is light vampire, um, and the trash waves here is a um, bunch of death knights. These are all the elemental ones, and the next lot of trash waves is death knights again, but the light dark versions. Okay, so again, similar to the pre like four seventy, they they use fedora on this first stage. So. Um, Keep in mind that you might need to bring buff removal to stop them from moving, or oh, sorry, to like stop them from preventing your um, your stuns and freezes and stuff. Um, and it's it's recommended to bring a wind tank as well, like a very very tanky wind unit for these Arnolds, because they'll double extortion that wind unit, right? And you need someone pretty tanky to survive. But she soon barely survived there. She does have like 40k HP before towers, so she's quite tanky. Um, but it'd be a lot easier to use something like a Brian to tank it, right? If you don't have a Brian, it will depend on what um, units that you have available. But I think those are probably the best options that, uh, apart from, uh, well, that at least provide you in, like additional utility. Like f for example, you could bring. And I can Ameda to tank them, but I don't think it's worth it because Ameda doesn't really do much else other than tank. Um, alternatively, you can just bring a reviver, right? And whoever they extort, you just revive them. That's probably the easiest way or easiest alternative if you can't like make if you can't crowd control the uh, Arnolds forever, right? Because you have to. There's a lot of things going on in this fight. Or at least this portion, because there's like immunity, and then there's also like heavy damage from uh, from those Arnolds, because they have a lot of health because it's TOA hard. Just keep that in mind. So the extortions do a lot of damage. Okay, so like any other fight, just crowd control your way through, and or just tank through it if you if your team's tanky enough. Now my team, I'm running two healers, but like, you don't have to use two healers. It's more because I'm Autoing through uh, that I'm, I'm running two healers. Um, there is a purpose to running the Bella though, but which I'll get to once we get to the Julianne stage. Uh, same for the Tessarian. Now to explain Julianne, the way he works is like they've changed him um, semi recently, uh, probably like a few months ago now actually. But um, the, the, the way they changed him was that. Uh, his pass, his passive now sort of protects him from dying. So if he has an ally that is, you know, still got health, he'll leech life from uh, that unit and give it back to himself when he's about to die. So basically, you you have to um, kill the ads first before you kill Julianne. Otherwise, they'll just keep feeding him HP, right? Um, and also, especially because the adds that he has are Artamios, and Artamios can heal. So if they can just, if they can theoretically just keep healing themselves and stop you from killing Julianne altogether. So you have to focus the Artamios first to get rid of them, 
and it makes it a lot easier to kill the boss. Once the ads are dead, the boss is fairly easy. He just does he does some damage. He does decent damage, but nothing too scary, right? He doesn't defense break or anything like that. He doesn't ignore defense. He does do pretty big burst, but um, if your units, units are tanky enough, that's fine. Especially if you bring a dark tank. It's recommended if you can, but not necessary. If you don't bring a dark tank, you can just bring a reviver and like uh, you know, if someone happens to die from uh, Julianne's second skill, then you can revive him. Uh, now, on this stage, the Conrads also, like, they do pretty decent burst damage too from their third skill. And if they kill anyone, they'll revive someone. Right? So just be careful with that, especially because they're all light element. So they're all, like, most likely, right, uh, well, if anyone's defense broken, they're all gonna go for that unit, and it's pretty likely that they'll, they'll die, right? From three big nukes, um, and all of these units have defense break, right, on their second skill. So just be careful. So if you can bring immunity or cleansing to keep, you know, to keep it off, then that's highly recommended. You know, even like a Veramos should help a lot, right? You can also direct their damage to Veramos uh, as well. Um, apart from that, there's not much else. It's mostly just be careful with the Conrads, because they do a lot of damage uh, from the third skill. They also attack scaling too. So if you can crowd control them, it's, it makes it a lot easier. Because none of them have immunity, there's no immunity on this floor, so not much to worry about. Okay, so... Also, just one general tip for tier way hard. Once you sort of get to this point, what you should be doing is um, set it set it back to manual, and um, just focus down the unit down with first skills. That way, you don't waste your cooldowns, and you can also like get rid of the the, the, the cooldowns as well. Okay, so here the Artamios have a passive, right? And they've also changed the passive a bit. So originally, what the passive normally does is, whenever you you do a critical hit, the like. From your side, the Artamios on the opposing side will revenge that unit, um, and uh, they'll also gain attack bar. So obviously, it's recommended that you don't bring, or like you try to ruin your TOA hard units towards really low amounts of crit rate. But even if you have like no crit rate substats on your units, you still have a 15% chance innate from like because like it's like the bait. You every unit has a base stat of 15 crit. At, uh, at least, unless they awaken into crit. So, um, there's always going to be that chance to crit. And uh, experience has, has shown me that even if you have 15% crit, you'll crit a lot against Artamios, right? It's like one of, one of the most common complaints. Uh, so, the best way to get around it is to Siren, right? So, to Siren can silence the passive. Uh, also, there's one more additional effect on the passive is when you hit the Artamio, they'll gain a, like a stack which uh, stacks up to five times. Each stack will increase his defense uh, per uh, percentage. So, um, and his, uh, his abilities or his damage scales off defense, which is the first skill. So obviously when he's revenging you, his first ability is uh, scaling off defense and does a lot of damage. So that's why Tamils are pretty hard in TOA hard. Now, um, so obviously there's two ways to get around it. First way is to sign to Oblivion. Once you've Oblivion them, they won't even revenge you, so it's a lot easier to, to kill them off. They're also not gaining attack bar, so you can keep things like heal block on the Tamiel. So in case they hit, they try to heal, you, will, you can block that from from happening, and it makes it a lot easier to kill them. The alternative is to to bring a defense breaker. So that's why I have Bella in there. So what I did on my alt account is bring Bella because my my alt account doesn't have a Tessarian built. So I use Bella to defense break the Artamios, and that's what, and that way when they do attack you or revenge you with their passive, they don't do as much like they don't do anywhere near as much damage. And you should be able to tank for it as long as you you're not critting every single attack. And yeah, you know, if you can stun them as well, they also cannot revenge you. All right, so uh, easiest way to kill any TOA hard ad is to use. Dots, so that's why Beretta is, you know, the one the pretty much most commonly used um, TOA hard unit. 
alternatively, alternatively, you can also bomb them. Uh, good thing about bombs as well is they also stun. So uh, that's also another another alternative way to uh, crowd control the Artamios. So also as an example, my um, on my alt account, I used Sierra uh, to stun the Artamios, especially because there's only two of them. So you know, being able to stun one out of two is pretty good. But you have to make sure that if you bring C bringing Sierra to, uh, to this Artemio fight uh, or this fight with Artemios, you need to make her fairly tanky because otherwise like, she'll crit eventually, right? And if she crits, then double Artemio pro like, countering her will quite likely one shot her if you know they're both attacking her with without defense break. Uh, heal block is also highly recommended here, so that's another reason to bring Brian. He's also obviously a good sort of backup plan. Apart from that, Julian by himself doesn't really do much. Very easy to kill. Just defense break him to speed it up. He can't get Oblivion, but doesn't really matter, alright? So once he's alone, it's a lot easier to kill. Alright, so this is uh, the double Okuk girls uh, floor. So it's Laura, which is the light one, and Charlotte, which is the wind one. This is one of the most difficult uh, uh, floors, TOA hard floors. Um, Especially at TO890. Uh, the main reason is Okukos have a violent proc chance on the first skill. So even if you uh, taunt them, they have a chance to proc you know, violent and then AOE you. So that's why like you can mitigate some, some of the damage with taunts. And it's a good sort of additional layer of protection. But you have to do more than that, right? So I'll get to that once... We get a bit closer to to the uh, the Oku girls. So this team is n not really farmable or anything like that, right? Obviously, uh, but I recorded this a while ago. I was actually still like doing TOA hard when I recorded this. Um, so um, uh, one, I wanted to try this comp, and two, like it was it's sort of like a fun comp. Right. I also wanted to show, like, show, sort of showcase that bombers can be pretty good in TOA hard, and this is sort of like a way to use them. You, like, you don't have to have Varad and Gadamidi in there to make it work. So you just need like one or two bombers and something that can mass threes or mass stun. All right. Uh, so a recommended unit that you can use is Tyron. He's also a nat four, but like. I mean, bombers aren't exactly farmable except for Jojo, um, and ideally, I would say you probably want to bring at least two in case like Jojo resists if you're running a Jojo for this. Um, and yeah, so like you, know, you, you kind of need that force anyway. But so uh, the reason to use Tyron is he's got a mass AOE threes, and uh, it's a good way to stop them from moving for one turn because you need to buy one turn. Uh, for your bombs to tick down, right? Because bombs require two turns before they go off, so that's that's why you should try to pair the bombers with some sort of uh, alternative crowd control unit. For for me, I'm using Varad because I've got Varad. But before I got Varad, I used to use Tyron. Uh, there are other alternatives. Uh, some people use things like Prom or Thrain. Thrain is another alternative. Little, not not that reliable because it's random, but yeah, they're like there's like other alternatives. You can like search them up um, on Swarm Farm quite easily. Uh, another alternative is the Water Homunculus if you happen to have him or farmed him, because um, he's you can build him towards like like a good TOA hard build with um, he's got like an AOE freeze as well, um, and you can he's got like a lot of AOEs which you can use despair uh, to combo with. <coughs> Now Mav, of course, is really good for this um, because he uh, resets or he reduces the cooldowns, right? And he'll add a bit of like an extra layer of protection by, like, in case there's like a unit loose, like you know something that's not stunned, doesn't have a bomb on them or anything like that, then Mav can taunt that unit and you know d direct the, that unit to attack Mav because Mav will typically be fairly tanky. He can also self heal with his second skill. Right, so the second skill is a self heal for twenty five percent of his health, uh, plus the taunt. So it's a good like synergy like in his own kit, and of course the speed buff helps a lot. 
Um, let's see. Uh, alternatively, you can also bring like another bomber if you want. So if you can, you can also bring like a third bomber if you want. If you happen to have that many of them. Um, otherwise, you can bring things like you know any sort of attack bar increase. Any other unit that can uh, stun is great, of course. You can also bring Beretta for the like the speed lead and dots. That's another alternative. He can also help control the units with a bit of you know, despair procs and also turbulence in case something is loose. He can reset the attack bar. Um, but there's there's other ways to do uh, the Oku girls, but I'll get to that soon. So the reason why uh, bombs are great in TOA hard is that not only is it like ignore defense damage, right? You can actually apply it to the bosses, right? So unlike dots, like you know, Breda can't apply the Phoenix Fury to to the boss, right? So you can't dot them, otherwise it's too OP. But you can bomb them, so it's an alternative way to sort of speed up the run a bit because you can do a lot more damage to them that way. Especially if you're running YOLO bombers. Um, personally, I think YOLO bombers are better for this if you're able to keep everything under control you know, with other, you know, other units that can freeze. So obviously, if you have Varad, it's very easy to bring two YOLO bombers, and then the bombers will do a lot more damage, and you can speed up the run a lot more. And also, for the boss stage, like you know, the more damage you're doing to the bosses, the faster it goes, the less chance that something can go wrong. So, um, if you can stop them from attacking you enough, then that will help a lot. So other uh, other attack, attack bar reduction units you can use is like Wuchi is a, is a good example. He's sort of like the alternative to things like Varad and Ganymede. Um and uh, things like Spectra could work too. Like for the slow, the slow helps a lot to give you buy you more time to apply more bombs and stun them as well. All right, so there's all, obviously the imps there, but the imps should be the easiest to crowd control, right? As long as you got crowd control, you can stop them from moving. Now the boss themselves, um, as I said, the taunt is not like 100% foolproof, right? Because they can violent proc off the like off the teddy bear skill, um, but you know it's a, a good sort of just in case. Alternatively, you can bring things like. Um, uh, attack, uh, mass attack bar reduction units are great for this if you have enough of them. Um, then the other alternative is to, is to just tank through the whole thing. Tank, tanking through it is a lot more difficult. First off, you probably need to bring. Alright, so as long as you can cover all the damage reduction sort of debuffs, so you need to cover slow, attack break, and glancing. Right, that's the, that's the ideal thing to bring. So if you have you happen to have Arya, Arya is very good for this because she provides the glancing debuff and also the slow. So that's one one uh, possibility. Um, you can bring Brian because he's got AOE at AOE attack break. As long as he's max skilled on second skill, uh, that helps a lot. You can also bring Bernard. Bernard also does you know uh, attack break and, and even defense break to help speed up the run, uh, while also providing other additional utility. You can do that as well. Um, as, lo as long as your team can move fast enough so that he can defense break both units before they move. Um, another alternative unit is uh, Shannon. Shannon is another, I would say a bit underrated for this because she provides uh, defense buff for your team which is the other important sort of uh, utility skill to bring. Uh, she also does glancing and slow as well. So she's also like she's like a easy to obtain unit. She's quite squishy though, so you have to make her quite tanky for this. But her skill kit works really well for this if you have to tank through all the damage. Now you also need to be careful because the cook girls have debuffs and also stun, right? So the second skill stuns, third skill does debuffs, and uh, the Charlotte also does attack by reduction. So if you're trying to tank through it. Not only do you need to bring those debuffs and buffs, you should also try to bring immunity just in case you know things go wrong. Uh, and another like sort of layer of layer of protection you can bring is skill reset. So a unit like a good example is Delphoi. The reason to bring Delphoi is she's got skill reset on second skill, and also she did, like heals and uh, cleanses plus immunity buff on third skill. So she provides a lot of utility for this as well. 
So if you can reset the skills on the uh, Okuka girls, when they do move, at least they're only doing the first skill. But sa same sort of idea as Taunt, uh, they can Vine Brock and you know do the AoE after. So you still have to be, be careful. But if, they, if you can stop them from moving like, as much as possible, it, you can sort of tank through like a hit every now and then and then just like recover and then yeah, then another the other Kuko should move after that and then try to just like rinse and repeat recovery. So yeah, there's a few options you can do there. So you can see I'm just stacking a whole bunch of bombs. This is sort of why I thought, let's try this idea for fun, right? Um, and you can see that they're affected by the bombs and it, you know, it does decent damage. Uh, the builds I have, I have on these bombers is Malaka is like a YOLO build, but he's on like, he's on a world boss build, so he's actually slower than my Mav, which is not what you want to do, right? So if you're running bombers, actually uh, any unit you run in a team with Mav, Mav should also always move last on your team so that he can reset all their cooldowns after they've used their skills. So just keep that in mind. Um, and my Dover is on like a support build because at the time I was trying to use use, use Dover as a support um, for my auto team. Uh, it worked okay, but I think it was much, it was much safer with my my, my usual team. So uh, since then I've just changed him to like a, a wall boss, you know, because I haven't really used him. Uh, obviously I, w I would like to use him, but. Um, I don't really have the team to use him for PvP yet, so he's sort of, sort of in just like in storage mode until I can get Sierra. Um, so yeah, pretty much I'm just stopping them from moving as much as I can with Varad and Ganymede, and eventually they're gonna move. But when they do move, they they take a lot of bomb damage. Okay, so I think that pretty much covers uh, like the main. Like the key points to like beating the these bosses so uh, if I missed anything feel free to let me know in comments uh, if you if there's any units you're unsure of like whether they could be used in like a certain boss stage or situation let me know as usual and I'll, I'll answer you as soon as I can uh, also I just apologize for the, the video quality on this on like TOA 90 I think it's not as good as the uh, 70 and 80 ones because at the time I didn't change my video settings so it's probably not as clear but um, I have messed around with, with the settings and um, so at least like the 70 and 80 boss should look a lot clear, clearer uh, I hope that's noticeable because uh, you know, there was like a bit of a complaint but I always, I always wanted to improve the, the quality of the video anyway so I was, I've been messing around with my like, uh, recording settings and stuff Alright, that's it from me. I'm going to leave it there. Uh, there's still a bit more on the boss, but I'll just leave it. And uh, I'll see you guys next time. Good luck with TOA Hard. We have, like, we, you will have like one more week to do it. Uh, I'll try to get the next TOA Hard video for next month out a bit earlier if I can. Alright, so until then, I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.